Okay, good evening and welcome to uh, second lecture, uh, ITS 832, Information Systems in a Global Economy. Uh, this will be posted on uh, July 8th, 2019, and I'm your professor, Don Walker. So we'll get started with the, this week. Uh, here's an overview. We'll, I'm going to uh, discuss the, the flow of the, the topics and how the rest of the course is going to play out uh, a little bit. I'm, I'm still putting some detail to uh, the assignments and discussions that are coming up, um, but I, I know what I want to cover and the direction I want to take the course uh, from, from here on out. Um, I'll give you some detail on, on week two, uh, the, the discussion topic and, and paper topics and how to approach those to maybe add some, uh, some detail and quality and specificity to, uh, to our discussions and, and writing. I'd like to offer some writing tips. You know, I, I recently finished my, my doctoral journey and, uh, did a, an enormous amount of writing. <laughs> I haven't gone back and actually done a page count of all the papers I turned in. My dissertation was I don't know, 120 pages, something like that. So um, the writing uh, chore is fresh on my mind. So I wanted to share some things there and, and then I'll conclude. So for the rest of the course, um, I'm going to rely a little less on the textbook. There are still uh, two chapters of assigned reading, but I'm not going to pin myself uh, slavishly to, to the, uh, the text and, and the articles. The, the textbook, if you will notice, if you go through and read, read the abstracts and the, the findings of all of these, uh, these academic papers that make up the chapters, of our textbook, you'll, you'll see that it's information systems and data analysis support to policy making in general, general policy. <clears throat> and some of the, uh, the effects of developments in information systems that affect public policy, but it doesn't focus for me, it doesn't focus closely enough on policies that affect information technology professionals. So the, what, you, what you'll learn in those readings about uh, modeling and simulation are valuable, are important. But I don't believe that the textbook will, will expose us to uh, the appropriate um, breadth of topics when it comes to public policy that affects information technology professionals. We get laws passed that affect what we do uh, as a profession from uh, information security to telecommunications, the, the, the way the, the bell system was broken up with uh, the Telecommunications Act. Um, and it runs the gamut. So we're going to talk about as, as many of, we'll, we'll, we'll fit in as many of those topics as we can. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to propose uh, the weeks ahead, the, the, the seven weeks ahead. But uh, if there are particular areas of uh, public policy, whether that's national or international agreements, international standards, um, you're welcome to shoot me an email and, uh, and make suggestions. I'll, I'll try and, weave those into uh into the class if if possible and and by by popular demand um so the way i want to the way i want to move forward with the course is that i want the discussions to be somewhat general on a topic so i'm going to ask you to you know broadly discuss the you know three to five leading concerns or, or subtopics of a given uh, potential policy area. Um, and then 
in your paper, I'm going to ask you to focus uh, more more specifically um, on your three academic papers, your uh, your personal connection assignment, and your final research papers, specific especially. Uh, so that that's how we're going to roll with the, the the weekly assignments, discussion questions, and papers. Okay, so um, I, I did some some background research. There's there's not a huge amount uh, of research, and again, I use Google Scholar to find papers uh, because of their keyword search and then their relevancy returns are the best. Uh, that I have found compared to using like, you know, ProQuest or Elsevier or any of the other uh, um, databases at the library. I seem to have better luck using uh, Google search to, to span them all. Um, if, if you found something that's, that finds more and more relevant articles than Google Scholar, uh, please shoot me a, shoot me a note. But uh, when, when I was working on my doctorate, uh, I would use Google Scholar. And another great thing about Google Scholar is it allows you to download um, the, uh, the, 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 foot, the citation, the footnote material. Uh, everything I did was in APA format. So, and I used EndNote as my bibliographic software. Um, so I would download things in, in, uh, RAS format or, or EndNote native, and it would be, they wouldn't be flawless, but Google Scholar is pretty good about, uh, the, they seem to have pretty accurate citations. So I did a little bit of background research and, and I came up with, uh, some overarching, uh, data policy, uh, information systems, IT policy issues. Uh, now, within these uh, remaining six uh, weeks, um, there will be subtopics. So if I don't cover something that you're interested in, um, shoot me a note, and, and it's likely that I've already thought of that, and I put it in, in, in one of these categories, and, and we'll get to it in, in coming weeks. But again, um, if you're interested in something specific like... Uh, I don't know, the FAA's control of drone technology, uh, or if something like, um, you know, uh, data ownership and who, who owns all the data that you create in cyberspace, you know, any of those kinds of uh, laws, uh, legal policy, legislative policy um, that you'd like to explore in this course, you're welcome to shoot me an email and we can, we can discuss it. Uh, so, okay, so the, the topics I came up with to come moving forward uh, in this coming week, day, week two, we're going to talk about data management, and I'll go into more detail on that uh, since it's this week's. Uh, but then uh, another top top issue um, is, uh, public pri is the privacy concerns, uh, um, whether that's traffic cameras on, out on the highway or uh, ownership of, of data, you know, Google <laughs> selling information about your your uh, activities on the internet, those sorts of things. Um, people selling your data. Um, there there are are several subtopics, and we'll we'll go into each of these in more detail. Uh, managing disruptive technologies, and th some subtopics will 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 cross uh, these threads, and we and that's fine, and we can discuss them in in repeat weeks, but. Disruptive talk technologies I'm thinking of are things like uh, that, that have an information technology, uh, heavy information technology side are like self-driving cars. That is a, an, an AI project um, rolling down the road and, and people are concerned about uh, um, how the government is going to manage the implementation of those sorts of technologies, self-driving cars. Uh, Internet of Things, home uh, home security systems, uh, artificial intelligence in general, and and the <laughs> the robot workforce that surely seems to be coming uh, inevitably, and how we're going to manage that technology and integrate it into a workforce when it's it's going to displace uh, very likely millions of workers. Um, as we've already seen with, with, you know, information systems technology 
across the uh, across the board. So we'll we'll look a little bit more about about the policy side of how we might manage those. And again, this is a doctoral program, so always be thinking about how you would research and write about these technologies and the need for them or their efficacy if they were enacted. Um, methodologies that you would use uh, to propose new policies and, and prove uh, a model whereby they would be uh, shown to be necessary. So the next one would be taxation or government revenue, uh, however you however you want to look at it. What, 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 one thing we've seen in the United States is, is uh, most sales revenue is generated uh, by the individual states in order to provide services at the state level, uh, schools, police, firemen, all, all the above. And, uh, and when you order something online on Amazon, we went through a phase where we had no plan in place to collect sales tax because the sale was being completed in one state, but the transaction was, ha was happening at a website somewhere else and no sales tax. Since the sale didn't happen in a brick and mortar store, we, we didn't know how to handle that. Well, they're, they're still getting, uh, getting their, their hands around that issue, but we're starting to, to come to some, some solutions. Uh, another taxation issue is the, uh, the number of teleworkers, the number of remote workers working over the internet, um, just within the United States is growing, uh, phenomenally. And, uh, there are some States that are struggling with, uh, the problem that their, their workers in that state, uh, are from somewhere else, like say New York state, uh, they rely, uh, fairly heavily on income tax, but a New York state company, for example, uh, could, could farm their work out to teleworkers who are in maybe Florida, which has no income tax, uh, as do several. Um, and so New York state is now having work accomplished by companies in New York, but the employees aren't there. So there's no, no income being generated in the state. So they're, they're you're starting to see legislation where, uh, people are um, are coming to grips with the fact that that telework is an issue, and we need to come up with a standard national policy. Uh, I, I'm curious to see if if uh, our uh, our folks with international experience will will uh, will be able to share a, a similar concern. So that'll be taxation, and we'll go into some some other issues. And then I wanted to handle, I wanted to tackle compliance issues. And uh, again, some of these will have, uh, there'll, there'll be overlap in these issues, but partic particularly uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, SOX compliance, uh, there's quite a bit of research, uh, academic research out there on the information systems, normally accounting information systems and and how that data is managed and how transparent it is um, to allow audits to uh, and and we're we're going to see lots of stuff in in that uh, week about uh, uh, HIPAA health health insurance portability and accountability act HIPAA um, it has huge ramifications in the area of medical information systems uh, particularly patient records and and the the, uh, the desire to move towards um, electronic medical records. So uh, there are numerous places that, that you guys can take uh, um, that week's topic and run with it. Uh, and then week seven and final, yeah, I, uh, I had a, a course when I got my master's degree back in uh, 2000, 2000 to 2002. Um, we had recently broken up the uh, at and the Bell System, um, with the Telecommunications Act of 96, and, uh, and that broke the Bell System apart and lowered long distance rates and forced carriers to share infrastructure 
And, uh, and now we have just a, a, a really robust, super competitive, uh, and I think uh, relatively inexpensive telecommunications infrastructure uh, due to uh, mostly legislation that forced that to happen. But there's also under telecommunications, I want to talk about internet regulations and, uh, and you guys can, can explore uh, net neutrality and, and other forms of uh, internet regulation. Uh, international banking. I mean, any, anything that has anything to do with the uh, the, the network and, and how how data moves around uh, uh, would be fine. So that's our our, our coming our coming weekly topics. Um, and when when it makes sense, uh, I would love to examine these topics at the the U.S. level. Uh, reading most of your introductions, uh, seems like most folks work in the U.S. or at least have experience working in the U.S. Um, so that, that can be, uh, the default, but I would love to see uh, a comparison, um, and some contrast with other countries. Uh, if you've, if you've got expertise in any of these areas of policy and, uh, and it differs from the way things are done in the U S, uh, then please, uh, uh, figure out a way to, to weave that into your weekly discussion. And, uh, and then at the international level, uh, you've got standards bodies and, and international agreements and treaties and organizations that, that make this, this miracle work together. Um, so if there's policies that are happening at the, inter at, at the international standards uh, level um, that affect these areas, uh, please weave that into your discussions and your papers. Um, and that'll be very interesting to see. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say on that slide. Okay. So coming up this week, this week's discussion and paper. So the, uh, the, the textbook is interesting. Please do not, uh, pin anything. Don't pin your discussions or your papers to the assigned readings in the textbook. Uh, in week one, I saw a whole lot of the <clears throat> the first week's readings being just pasted into the classroom, and we're going to get past that. We're going to stop doing that. So week one's topic is data management, policy that affects the way organizations manage their data. Uh, and that's a, that's a fairly broad uh, topic, but I want to make sure that you, uh, you stay focused on that in your discussions and in your paper. Uh, so for the discussion, um, we're going to discuss the th what, what you see through your reading and through academic articles, not necessarily your own opinion. You need to be able to substantiate your opinion uh, with literature. But what are the three most important policy areas uh, affecting data management. So this is where you can go into subtopics of data management like we talked about, and we'll go into that a little bit more in, in, in the next slide. Uh, so that'll be the discussion. And again, support what you're saying uh, using literature, but paraphrase what the author said. Don't cut and paste you know, a sentence or two uh, as a direct quote into class discussion. Um, even if you do it in correct APA format, please don't paraphrase what the author is saying and discuss these things in your own words with your own thoughts, using your own knowledge and expertise. For the written assignment, uh, we'll go more specifically so that, that, that discussion, you're probably going to see people uh, mentioning quite a few few areas um, as the discussion progresses um, you might you might use one of your own uh, three policy topics that you uh, that you discussed you might see something that somebody else brought up that intrigues you that is maybe more applicable to your research area uh, and what you intend to do your your dissertation on now I saw uh, 
quite a few of you, this is your first term with the University of the Cumberlands, and this is your first term on your your, your dissertation, your your doctoral journey. So you're you're not likely to know uh, what it is that you want uh, to do your research on, but you might be, and it's never too early. I I decided on my dissertation topic um, probably within the the second month of my 36 month program and held to it. And I, I worked, uh, I worked that topic into most of my coursework, um, so that I, I would be building my dissertation as I went through my coursework. And you're welcome to do that here too. Uh, so your written assignment, I want you to be very specific, uh, a subtopic of data management. Don't try and, bite off the whole enchilada because you're only doing two or three pages, three pages maximum at the absolute maximum, three pages of content. Okay. So in that paper, uh, what I want you to do is define the topic area. What, what is this, this policy area that you're discussing? Um, you're, and, and in that, if you need to do a direct quote of, uh, a sentence, then that would be appropriate. If it's a, a seminal definition in an article that's been cited, you know, a thousand times, uh, then it's okay to do a, a, a direct quote. But if you're just paraphrasing, if you're just uh, using several sources to inform your definition, then paraphrase and and cite them in paraphrase format for APA, according to APA rules. Uh, so you'll, you'll define the topic area and then uh, what it is. That's the what. And then the second part of your program or of your paper will be uh, why. Why is this a problem? What, what is happening in technology? What are the technological changes uh, that are driving a need for public policy to govern that technology? Um, I would prefer that you... Uh, you cite a source for the two, three, five main reasons this is a problem. Again, it's only a three page paper maximum. So you can't, you don't need to be exhaustive. And then using your analysis and the literature, uh, I want you to, to, to write about what, what's coming in the form of public policy to uh, to solve that issue. Okay, so that's going to be week two's content. You'll, of course, you'll see that in the classroom. Okay, so here's some some examples uh, just from my my brief research in this topic area. I'm sure you're you're going to put more more work into it than I did. <laughs> uh, the, there may be a scarcity of uh, peer reviewed journal articles to support your research. And, and that's okay. Um, when you, there are uh, some non peer reviewed sources that are better than others. You know, don't, don't, don't use uh, a vendor website just because some company said something that's, that's, that could be marketing hype. Just trying to get, trying to lure in customers, try and use some sort of periodical, or, uh, or a known expert in the field. Sometimes we'll have a blog that you can, and you can quote that known uh, technology speaker. Um, but if, if you start with practitioner articles, sometimes you can, you can find, you can use that terminology to lead you towards the, uh, the academically rigorous peer reviewed journal articles that you'll need. Um, like for your dissertation and, and would be good to use in this course. Uh, so for data management, the kind of things I'm thinking of and looking for, and this is not exhaustive. I don't have everything on the list here. You're, you're welcome to, uh, to expand it. If you have any doubts at all that you're going too far outside of what I consider data management, please, by all means, shoot me an email and I'll, and I'll clarify. Um, when you when when you ask me the question though, try and frame your idea as to why it applies to data management. You know, according to what what we're talking about here. Uh, example areas are data protection. There are uh, recent legislation that's been levied on 
organizations to mandate that they do due diligence to protect your data um, and holds them somewhat liable for uh, for uh, irresponsible behavior in regards to your consumer data. Then there are uh, there's legislation like the Privacy Act, which limits the uh, the, the amount of personal information that um, uh, mostly government agencies more than more than commercial that uh, government agencies can handle on you that's personally identifiable information. Trying to limit that exposure within their databases. Um, a very large, uh, if you work at all in the public sector, whether whether it's local, state, or national, is uh, records management and uh, what is considered a record, how long the disposition schedule, how long to hold on to records, what to do with an information system, as opposed to, you know, maybe something like a, a phishing license application. That, that's a piece of paper that they can file away or a, a, a PDF document that can be filed away for a certain amount of time. But when you have an entire information system, uh, how you archive that record for uh, for transparency and for accountability and for you know the public the future use of the public that starts to get a little more complicated uh, so we have the uh, the federal records act in in America that, and Australia has a, a very robust um, records management uh, legislative slate so uh, those that's that's an area that you could go into uh, legal discovery um, is getting to be uh, a, a big deal. Um, it's particularly because electronic records, corporate records are electronic. So it's not like a, a, an attorney can, can uh, file a lawsuit and, and the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the company that maybe is being sued has to do, you know, a, a file search of its, of its paper-based records. That doesn't happen anymore. Um, when, when, a, a lawsuit is filed and, and the parties involved have to, uh, comply with discovery laws, a lot of that information now is electronic. So it's, it's getting to be where, where that element of data management, where, where a company has to be very careful about the way they manage their data in case they get sued and they have to comply with a discovery request. For example, Toyota airbags when the giant multi-billion dollar lawsuit comes down the pike and they want to know everything Toyota knows about Takata airbags uh, that becomes an, a, a, a huge uh, electronic search and text mining exercise in order to comply with the, that legal discovery. I dealt with that somewhat at the federal level in my uh, prior career. So those are just examples of uh, of the kind of policy subtopics that you can go into this week uh, to satisfy your discussion and uh, and your paper. Now, if you were doing a paper, I would I would hope that you would go into one of these small areas and even perhaps an even smaller area. Uh, the the tighter you focus, the easier it will be. Uh, to fill three pages with substantive text and not, you can write three pages of background. I mean, my introductory paragraph for my dissertation was, my introductory chapter was, you know, 20 pages. You, you can't pick something so broad that merely the introduction is going to take uh, two pages. It's only a three page paper. So the tighter you focus, the more narrowly you focus on your topic, uh, the, the, the better your paper will be and, and the easier it will be to, uh, to satisfy the course requirement. So again, in discussion, we'll go broad in your papers. I want to see you focus, uh, very tightly on a subject. It's a skill. It's anybody can write, you know, 40 pages of background fluff. Uh, I, I Sometimes Mark Twain, <laughs> the great uh, American author, is quoted as, uh, as having said, I, I didn't have time to write you a two-page letter, so I wrote you a 10-page letter. <laughs> because it takes 
effort and concentration and time to boil down writing to its essence. And we'll go into that a little bit more in this lecture uh, at the end here. We'll talk about writing. So that's your, that's your topics. Be specific, uh, whatever you write about. Okay. Again, writing tips. And these tips stem from, uh, you know, my experience as a, a doctoral student and writing an enormous amount of nonfiction, uh, short, concise, informative uh, pieces for the military. You, you do not put uh, verbose garbage in front of a military decision maker uh, and, <laughs> and come away unscathed. You, you really have to be succinct. You have to write accurately, truthfully, uh, and, and briefly. You, you just do not have uh, time to, 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 to blabber uh, like some things that you will read. So that's my experience, and I'll, I'll pass that on to you for what it's worth. Uh, but what I learned from my doctoral uh, writing was bibliographic software, and I, 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 I'll repeat myself. This is my first class with the University of the Cumberlands. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if, if one of you would, if, if anyone wants to uh, shoot me an email, that's fine. And let me know what bibliographic software you're using. I used EndNote and I lived and died by EndNote and the articles that I saved and the citations, I would save the PDF full version of the article and I would save the citation and integrated with Microsoft Word, uh, you can write your discussion posts and you can write your papers and you insert a reference to support what you've said and it automatically goes in the reference page and keeps track of things and if you if you delete that rep that if you delete the citation it automatically pulls the reference out of the reference list uh it's absolutely magical uh i used endnote with my program at colorado technical university uh, I'm, I'm eager to know what, uh, what you guys are using. So please feel free to shoot me an email and let me know what you think of the, the bibliographic software you're, you're using. If you're brand new to the program, if this is your first semester and you're two weeks into it, there's every chance that you have not installed bibliographic software. So I would encourage you to, uh, get in touch with, uh, your admissions advisor, folks at the library, uh, uh, and again, you're welcome to email me if no one has said anything to you about bibliographic software in this, uh, in your accession into the program. And if you're new, uh, shoot me an email. I'm curious to know, uh, because you need it. I, I never could have done my dissertation, uh, without EndNote. Okay. So for these, uh, for these assignments that we're doing, these three papers, and, uh, and your personal connection assignment. Uh, no abstract is required. On the final research paper, we're probably gonna use an abstract. Again, paraphrase. Don't, don't use anybody else's writing in class, please. It's, you don't need to unless you are using a seminal definition, and that will happen very rarely. Please do not use someone else's writing. I've seen lots of that happening in the first weeks of class, first week's discussion. Uh, it's, it's plagiarism, it's cheating, it's lazy, it's insulting to the other students that uh, don't care to read their textbook in your discussion posts. So again, paraphrase what an author has said and quote and, and then cite the source but digest what that author said, what their findings were, why it matters in the discussion. Digest that in a single sentence and cite your source. It's, it's, it's easy to do, but it takes time. It, takes, it requires that you digest this material and be able to discuss your sources uh, somewhat confidently. 
Uh, and that, that takes time. Uh, this, it's, it's not for everybody, but that's, that's what I'm uh, asking of you uh, to avoid plagiarism uh, entirely and avoid lazy writing. Uh, you, you won't see direct quotes in academic writing very often. Um, you know, you won't see a, 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 an expert in a topic saying, according to Smith, and then, you know, three sentences of, of what Smith said uh, in direct quotes, cut and pasted from Smith's article. You won't see it because it's, uh, it's too easy. It's lazy. Anybody can cut and paste uh, what, what your fellow experts will be, will be looking for is your ability uh, to, to walk them through a topic and support your main points, support your points by using the literature, but using what the literature says in your own words. Okay, so I'm, I posted a, uh, a sample APA paper. Um, you can use that as a, as a template uh, to get started. Please remove the existing topics. And it's only a template. It, it uses, it describes the various section headings and whatnot in, a, in APA format. Um, but uh, you, you will need to, to do a, a bit of editing to use it, but it shows you a sample of, of what is uh, APA formatted headings and the title page and all that kind of thing, stuff. Another tip is to develop an outline. Sometimes people start typing without knowing where they're going. An outline is a, a good roadmap. Um, you need to have your, you know, your, your three main points, uh, do a, a brief overview, brief summary, and you're done. Um, if you just start typing, you're probably going to get too far into this three page paper and realize that you're just, you're just giving too much background information and you haven't truly, um, you haven't truly outlined what you're going to say. Think about what your paper is going to say from beginning to end before you ever write the first line. Uh, and then again, I'm going to harp on this because I'm seeing uh, so much uh, not using your own words. Um, I'm seeing people pasting stuff from the internet. Uh, you know, uh, People are, you're, you're paying too much money and you're at way too high of a level of education to be relying on cutting and pasting. Uh, I teach at the undergraduate level and uh, these folks are right out of high school or, you know, they have a high school education and they don't cut and paste content into class discussion without hearing from me. Um, I encourage you all to, uh, to call each other out in class discussion. Uh, I have seen some of you respond to a post that was obviously cut and pasted from the internet and tell people, good post, what I want to say here is, and then you post something from the internet. Um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask for that to stop uh, entirely. Uh, when I start seeing what is, obviously uh plagiarized content i'm i'm uh, i'm giving out zeros and i'm turning in <laughs> uh issues to uh to the university to deal with it's just uh it's just not acceptable so if you've been relying on that uh welcome to uh your doctoral program please stop everything you write needs to come out of your brain as your own original words okay uh Back to the size of these papers, uh, stay focused and be very specific. Um, you, you have, you know, three or four sentences, four or five, four or five sentences maybe to introduce your topic at the beginning of a three page paper. And you'll see in, in the template, uh, that's all. If you, if your topic is so broad that you cannot introduce it, uh, sufficiently in that, you know, four or five sentence paragraph, then you need to rethink your topic. It's too broad. Or rethink the way you're, you're introducing it. Um, do not turn in more than three pages. Uh, it's, like I said, it's really easy to just start typing. And 
uh, folks will try and cut and paste content into their paper and then re reword it. Uh, and as I said in the previous, uh, the previous bullet, when you start with somebody else's wording and you try and reword it, you mess it up. You, you ruin the original meaning. It becomes full of mistakes and the wrong words and bad word choices. And it just turns into a mess and you just, it, it, detracts from your credibility. Um, if, if you can't write clearly in your own words, uh, there's plenty of help available out there. So write clearly and write simply and write in your own words and you'll be fine. Don't try to sound smart or sound like some article you read, uh, like you're doing an imitation of something. Write in your own words in the level of the language that you're comfortable in and you'll be much better off than trying to write uh, uh, over your head. It, it, I, I don't know how else to put it. I'll, uh, I'll, also, I'll post some of my previous writing so you can get an idea of my, my style. I'm a, I write very plainly, um, but it's, it's easy to understand and it communicates the required information. Uh, well, another tip I would share is that you, uh, you read what you've written out loud to yourself. And I know people will try and read it in their minds to themselves. They'll read it quietly, read it silently. It doesn't work. Read it out loud. If it doesn't make sense out loud, it doesn't make sense on the page. So read everything that you're writing. Read your discussion posts. Read your replies. Write them out in Microsoft Word if necessary. But read what you're writing out loud uh, before you turn it in, before you hit post. And, uh, and, make, and, and make sure it makes sense. That's an easy way to catch obvious errors. Uh, if it's a tongue twister, if you've got a sentence structure that just does not make sense, uh, you'll catch it that way. Okay. So in conclusion, uh, I, I, I don't think I can overstate how concerning and rampant and inappropriate the level of plagiarism was in week one. And you may not realize it, but behind the scenes among my colleagues on the faculty, uh, we are distressed beyond words at the level of comfort uh, University of Cumberland students are having with plagiarism. And uh, I'm going to do what I can to stop it it may not be um, as effective as I wish it would be, but uh, it's, it's pretty bad. And if, if you didn't realize, if you did that in week one and you just didn't realize how important it is to write originally, uh, then okay, clean slate. Um, but starting with week two, um, I'm, I'm unable to deal with cutting and pasting stuff from the book. And, and I can tell when you've cut and pasted something from an article and you've changed the words and now it, it's absolutely uh, uh, unintelligible. Uh, it would be unintelligible to anybody else that read it. Stop doing that. Write clearly, write plainly, write in your own words and everything will be fine. Okay. Uh, the syllabus is, is correct. The points that I laid out, the weekly readings, um, the weeks and the due dates of the papers and everything, um, I believe are still correct. I'm not seeing a need to, to edit or update the syllabus yet. Um, however, the, uh, the grade book is not correct. I'm, I'm still working on, on this on University of the Cumberland's uh, implementation of Blackboard, uh, which we call iLearn. And, uh, and I, I still have work to do in the grade book. Um, so if you're, if you're pulling up, you know, a my grades report or something like that, and it looks wrong, looks weird, confusing, that's what's going on is uh, I'm, I'm still working on, on the grade book and, and getting everything set up right with the right points and everything. So uh, please don't, let, don't let that be a concern. 
Um, I, again, as I said previously, I'm still uh, developing the the detail of the 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 rest of the course's content. I'd like to stick with those those main areas, but I'm sure there are subtopics within there as I as I developed for week two. There are probably subtopics in there that you guys might like to uh, to at least discuss during this lecture, if nothing else, but probably weave into your uh, your papers and discussions integrate into your your study area. Um, and if so, please shoot me an email. Uh, if there's any concerns, questions, uh, the I had a terrible time getting the lecture posted this week. Um, even posting a YouTube video didn't seem to work. But um, by chance, if my final uh, YouTube for download or video for download, if that worked, uh, it worked for me. If it worked for you, please let me know how the how it finally worked. Uh, um, and and again, uh, this is the first week of class, and we had a long weekend with the holiday, uh, so it was tough to get a hold of tech support. Tech support was closed, as I'm, you probably know. <laughs> tech support was closed all weekend, so it was tough for everybody. Um, but other than that, I think I'm going to conclude week two's lecture. And uh, wish you all a good, uh, productive week two.